this is the debug uh, control right uh, let yes. me speak to few more things here just so that you know, people can follow along a little bit better. So here, what we have is the variable related information, the local variables, and these are the CPU registers. Let me go ahead and expand those right? CPU and other registers. So these remember again, go back to. So uh, for today's session, what we are going to do is take a look at uh, how to jump into the main function uh, by booting the CPU cold, right? Uh, uh, booting the CPU. So we are going to look at what all is required to go from powering the CPU to jumping into main. Uh, so from the first thing that the CPU does to executing the main instruction uh, or the main function. And then um, what we'll cover is, you know, the basic minimal vector table that we should have then these are like the preconditions so that our programs work correctly, which is initializing the data segment and initializing the BSS segment and then how to jump to main. And then in case of interrupts, uh, we'll kind of show how to install like a dummy handler. Uh, yeah. Richard, do you want to you know, cross check if I completed or you know covered everything? Yeah, I guess you touched upon a all the topics uh, i okay. guess today is important because today is the first time we'll go away from theoretically teaching the cpus to actually playing Do around the CPU. cpu yeah and yeah. today we will bring people on par with the, what they know about the c language because they will right. finally see a familiar function which is main starting right. to start right. executing right. right and this will end the mark this will mark as the end of uh, what the difference between what a embedded C programmer should know versus a C programmer should know. Yeah. Well, and also, yeah. again, <laughs> there yeah. is no such thing as embedded C. There is only C that yes. is used for embedded C systems. For embedded programmers, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Let's hope we can issues. criticize for this again on the video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> then uh, go ahead, Rajat, take over and you can explain this and I'll yeah. point around. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, so this is a familiar diagram, and we touched upon it in the uh, in the past. And this is how a Cortex M4 boots up. And mm -hmm. at that time, we looked into that uh, ARM detects. Uh, so when a CPU to boot for a CPU to boot up, it needs two things. One is the program counter from where it has to start executing uh, the things, and mm -hmm. the second is the stack pointer because it manipulates stack pointer to store uh, store the context of different things. Right. And, you know, at this point, let me go ahead and mention that in order for us to allow C function calls, the yes. C function calls require stack. Stack pointer. Right. And for those reasons, we need a stack pointer. Yes. Yeah. Um, so there is additional thing as well over here. Uh, so in earlier CPUs, and uh, this was the reason people used to use uh, assembly a lot, because there was a misconception that the... Um, in assembly, you don't need a stack pointer. Mm -hmm. um, it's uh, for assembly to boot up, and that's why a lot of Cortex A device or a lot of uh, device startups are written in assembly because you don't need a necessarily need a stack pointer right. to start right. with. Um, right. And uh, somebody has to set up that stack pointer. However, right. this is quite opposite for Cortex M, where the stack right. pointer can be set up by the hardware itself. Right. So you can start right away from the C language. You don't need to write anything in assembly to start up a Cortex M device. Right, right, right. Right. And even if you are writing assembly, that uh, that assumption that you don't need to set up stack pointer for assembly to work is getting, you know, I would say it's not true anymore because hmm. in earlier devices, what used to happen is the storing of the context and restoring of the context when you jump between software and hard, mm -hmm. uh, between function calls, etc., anything that used to that means pushing the pushing the registers onto the stack, popping the registers out of the stack, that used mm -hmm. to be a software handle thing. Right, right. Hardware was not trying to do that automatically on the back, but Cortex mm -hmm. M devices does a lot of this push, push and pop automatically in hardware. For mm -hmm. example, when you are handling interrupt, the context or uh, some of the registers are pushed to stack automatically. Correct. Correct. 
so uh, the stack pointer is necessary irrespective you are writing in assembly or c in cortex m4 devices setting up stack pointer correctly is necessary right and you know yeah. i think we'll discuss on this uh, later also but i just want to kind of paint a picture as yes. to that interrupt context related thing right so let's say we have a foo function in c that is getting executed right and let's say the cpu itself in the registers have the values corresponding to the internal you know data of foo some registers are allocated to that and what people should imagine is let's say an interrupt uh, interrupt arrives right irq so interrupt arrives and the cpu now is supposed to jump to some other function which is called the handler right but then the thing is it was already executing something and it its registers already had some information it needs to save this somewhere yes and what rajat was mentioning is that this will automatically be stored on the stack some portion of it will be some portion of it. yes some portion of it will be stored on the stack and then the handler can you know go around and with its own data that can be put into some of the registers uh, and then once the handler is kind of you know done and returning back the m class cpus tend to take this stack region this uh, you know saved context so to speak and then restore it back yes and that's where you know your function can continue to work now with this as the background if the stack pointer here if that was never set then the cpu cannot store things and if it cannot store then it cannot well yeah. it just freezes will, or it goes it will store things but it will store at a very random location random and place, yes. end up in crash yes. it will just yes. assume what was there in the first word of yes. the vector table and just take it yes. as a stack pointer yes and start the operation over there yeah if this happens to be right memory then i think things will work by magic to certain yeah. degree right uh, but if this is an uh, this happens to be like a garbage number that's you know outside the right yeah. region then yeah you are in trouble it will go in hard fault or something like that yeah. okay cool so let's let's clean this up and yes. go ahead okay okay uh, so i i guess uh, so we we looked at it so we need two things the cpu needs two things which is the reset vector and the stack pointer for it to start booting so what happens is uh, based on the vector table offset register the cortex mm -hmm. m4 cpu will go to that memory location and read two words and it mm -hmm. will assume that the first word is the value of the stack pointer and the second word is the value of the reset vector correct and so and what it will do is it uh, since it is out of reset right now the device mm -hmm. has come out of reset uh, the reset vector so it will load the stack pointer to the the value of the stack pointer into the sp r13 mm -hmm. register mm -hmm. and it will set up the program counter as the reset vector correct right. and then it will start fetching from that address and start executing so mm -hmm. this is the minimal you need to set up there are multiple mm -hmm. exceptions over here etc but mm -hmm. this is the minimal you need to start up the device yes yes and i just want to kind of again draw the attention to the fact that this vtor uh, usually you know in the boot rom code or the manufacturer's code this will be set to the right address yes right uh, in this case we are showing it as zero and then so the as the cpu boots up the first thing it does that rajat was mentioning is read four bytes from here and put that into the r13 register so in this case you know hex 1000 copied from here to the r13 and then the reset vector is a function pointer so to speak address of a function that function starts from here in this case hex 200 and this hex 200 will be loaded into program counter and now what the cpu does is uh, floats this address on the instruction bus and fetches the instruction from this memory location and off it goes to executing a program Right. Yes. Okay. Perfect. So, anything else we want to cover on this slide? Uh, no, I guess it's covered. Okay. Then moving on to the actual startup. So, the CPU has done it. The CPU did what it was supposed to do in hardware. It went to a reset. It uh, loaded the reset handler into the PC and mm -hmm. uh, it set up the stack pointer. Hmm. And now the program flow is completely in the hand of the software. What software yes. is going to dictate? 
and, and by software we mean instructions and code instructions so, instructions and code okay. so what uh, what do we want this reset handler to actually do so hmm. when we were looking into the chapter of the linker we found hmm. that uh, uh, there are multiple sections in the device that needs to hmm. be respected dot text right. dot data and dot bss out of yes. which what we said is that dot data contains the initialized data dot bss contains the uninitialized data and yes. maybe they can go back to the previous video to revisit uh, what was discussed right. in that and what we want to do over here is we we looked at a very specific case and this is true for controllers that have two kinds of memory on them hmm. one hmm. volatile as well as a volatile hmm. memory and where the major program like mcus etc where the firmware is loaded in the flash but uh, the uh, runs out of ram as well right there is some memory yes. access to the rams as well and what okay. we discussed over here is that dot data is a very you know a uh, region that has a capability where we want to write it the both dot data and dot bss are the sections which we want to write it but dot mm. data has very critical values that need to be stored during power cycles because mm. it's the initialized value of some variables so we want dot data section to sit in flash but at the same time in ram as well right and what we want is that during run time our instruction should manipulate dot data section sitting in the ram not in the flash yes so the and this way we saw that funny syntax in the linker where we told the linker that even though you should uh, put this into the uh, flash memory segment we want you to tell rest of the instructions whichever is trying to access these variables that this location is actually in ram yeah but here is the catch it is not there in ram yeah and it's all instructions random. start executing they will try to access ram and find some dummy data over there which is not correct and our software may malfunction and will not yes. function as we expected to so somebody has to copy this section from flash and put that in the right location in ram right and that is one of the first job of the reset handler in the reset handler that is the first thing we want to do we want to move right. the dot data section from flash into the ram right similarly you know <laughs> similarly the second thing we want to do is initialize the bss section section to zero right yeah and this is the minimal there are a lot of things that we want to do in reset handler there, but those changes along with the device this is the minimal okay. you have to do it is not your device you are using yes irrespective of this device coming from stm microchip nxp ti or any other vendor express if this is the minimum you have to do in your reset vector it, and also you know irrespective of whichever controller or cpu you are yeah. using not only arm m but as you mentioned you know express if they have their own uh, so risk five also arm a also yes. all the setup codes typically do that surprisingly yeah. not well surprising to people maybe uh, not surprising to us so even uh, the apps that we write in c for on top of let's say linux as an operating system so even the you know runtime loader of that application that has its own startup code which also does exactly the same thing. yes exactly at least very at very minimal it does this and then the control is handed over to the main function yeah. uh, from the app right yes behind the scene the, there is like a linker script also and there is startup code also yes okay cool anything else we wanted to cover as part of this no i guess it's fine okay. we can start move on uh, a lot of this to... is going to look familiar because we discussed a lot of this in the linker section as well yes so yes. should we uh, do you want yeah let's let's maybe... jump to the code okay okay so let me then go ahead and first of find the window <laughs> where we have the code and let me change screen sharing to the reno repository can you see my screen yeah okay perfect so what i want to call people's attention to first of let me figure out how to get my pencil 
uh okay i forgot the shortcut <laughs> hello oh, okay uh let's see nope nope uh rajat i forgot the shortcut <laughs> control alt a <laughs> let control alt a okay yes. control alt a nope nothing uh let me quickly look them up ah nothing very <laughs> set <gone. laughs> let me just uh, set this i'll maybe you know uh, edit this part out uh, so a uh, z we wanted eraser for e uh, this was z set. and this D. was t right? yes. save that was interesting so i quit this bring it back i did uh nice okay fine so then what we did was we opened up uh, you know a new uh, chrome window and then you know people can go to this this uh, url here which is github.com/inpajamas/stm-renode uh, that is where the code is available and now what can be uh, done okay how do i get rid of uh, this eraser okay um so okay Escape, maybe maybe no <laughs> okay we are back to square one. right so what i uh, what people can do is go to this code button here then uh, you know create a code space if they don't already have one in my case it exists so i'm going to go uh, click on the three dots here go to open in browser and then just kind of wait and yeah so we have you know the the repository initializing and we are going to run our experiments here and then show some demos uh, in the meantime let me also yes uh, i don't know what should i set it to maybe s very nice let's close this still loading Okay, perfect. Uh, okay, Rajat, do you want to take over? Okay. Yes. Uh, so this is the STM thirty two Renode uh, base repository that we created. Um, mm -hmm. This uh, this is a minimal base platform. Everything is coded that you need to run on the STM thirty two F four discovery on a Renode. Renode is a mm -hmm. emulation platform. Mm -hmm. I did a video on this. Uh, maybe we will add it in the description as well. Right. And if you want to know how to go around, there is a readme.md that contains all the commands, etc. That you can uh, use to uh, that can uh, that you can use to navigate through the repository. Right. In fact, you know all the commands that we will use are also listed here. So, yes. uh, do we want to quickly talk over those just so that you know people know which one to use? Uh, yeah. Okay. Let, so, let let me go ahead. I think I'll yeah. I'll do that. Yeah. Okay. Right. This. Okay. So this command here, the cmake command, that will be required to kind of you know, uh, build, uh, which will also demonstrate. So this is uh, for that. Then uh, okay. After that, um, uh, this is to launch uh, Renode. And this is to load the STM uh, configuration, right? And uh, okay, then after that, just a moment, right? So after, and this is how it will be. Uh, okay, and those are the only commands that we need. Yes. And debugging is what we will show. Okay. Yeah. So then do we want to execute this command? Yeah, so let's, uh, let's do one thing. Let's delete that build CMake folder so that we start fresh. Fresh. Oh, correct. Yeah. So this so was from our previous run. Yeah. Let me delete this. Okay. Very okay. nice. Uh, okay. So I will go ahead and do C make hyphen yes. D. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yes. Did not. Let me copy and manually paste it. Nice. What? <laughs> It what is, is going on? Okay, <laughs> yeah, I'll just type it. C make hyphen D C make two back traces. It will uh, identify. Oh yeah, sure, sure, sure. You'll That's a good one. Yes. Does it actually? It is not doing that. The history is okay. Uh, 
let me open up a new terminal let's go from there nope why Oops. okay anyways let's start it uh yeah i think i'll just type it c make yeah. hyphen uppercase d c make underscore build type uh equals to debug capital d oh yes sorry thank you so and then dot slash build c make minus s dot slash yes. so this will create the c make directory here with all the right contents within it yes. and i suppose the next step is to go to that uh, c make build directory c -make. so build c make and there we have to run make and then this lab one binary will be created yes okay perfect uh yeah so that is available here where is the lab one? Oh, okay. uh, it's, it's at the bottom yeah yes okay perfect uh what should we do next okay uh i guess we can open up the startup and linker.ld side by side so that okay. uh, and from which directory source source uh startup.c startup.c and then linker is at the bottom linker.ld yes and then let me get rid of this let me also get rid of this yes okay perfect uh, let me bring so, up my pen yeah. yeah so we went through a lot of linker in the last video and mm -hmm. today we will mostly focus on the left side of the left side of the source code that is startup.c and we see how we link our linkers to the startup files how startup files uses the information supplied right. by the linker and so at the top, if we look at the, uh, we look at how to export symbols from the linker symbol yes. table. And if you look at the, uh, from line number two to seven, these are the yes. symbols that we are getting from the linker yes. symbol table. And mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, so if you, sure. so I want to yes. remind our viewers that in the binary, we mentioned there would be dot text. Right. Then there would be dot data, which is a little funny, right? And then there should have been dot BSS, but this was marked as no load. And what these, you know, symbols are tracking here. So for example, this one's tracking the end of text section. Uh, this one's, uh, okay. This one's start of the data this, section. And this is the start of the data section end of the data section and uh, this is pointing here and this is you know some memory which is end of stack okay uh, again to remind people this is supposed to so this is supposed to uh, actually go into the ram right and but right now it's yes so flash. this is flash it's supposed to go in ram and then uh, you know the bss section is also supposed to be initialized in the ram dot data and this yes. is dot bss okay go go ahead uh, rajat okay uh, the second thing we are we are going to do is we are going to say extern int main we say there is a function called main outside this the scope of this file that linker should figure out where it is and yes. link it to the function and link it to the branch that is going to happen at the bottom so, and then we go ahead and start with our minimal vector table. So we declare a, it's a nice thing to declare your functions before, uh, you know, actually yeah. using them. So it's just a declaration. Uh, but if I take the complete void handler that is from line number 22 to 39 and put it above this vector table, it makes no difference. Right. It's exactly so if, the same. Even if I take out line number 15. Right. So if you were to not have this, but move all of this. I have to put this, all of this yes. above. So if you put all of this yeah. above in this line before this region, then you would still be fine. Yes. Okay. Yes. But it's always a good habit to declare your yes. function first and then yes. use it. Okay. Uh, so. Uh, so yes, so we declare a minimal vector table and what we said is that the VTOR mm -hmm. That means the arm expects that where it is going to start executing, it expects a vector table to be first yeah. over there. 
and that's where we create two uh, two uh, create a vector table with two entries in it one is the stack uh, the memory location that the stack mm-hmm. should point to and the reset handler and we put it in a section called dot vectors right. and if you look at the section uh, if you look at the linker file dot vectors is the first section that we place in yes, flash which is here so we are respecting the arm specification where it says that wherever mm-hmm. i am trying to boot up the first thing i should address is a stack pointer right. under and I, I just want to remind people that in stm's case the vtor is pointing to this address yeah yes and that's why we are taking all of this and putting it in flash as the first entry so in the flash yes. starting from you know this magic number uh, all zeros so at this point we will have this entry a first word yes and the second word would be the reset handler's address right which is well we can open oh, the map file as well on the side and let me it. just uh, go ahead and open the map file where is the map file uh, in build cmake there is there should be lab one yes. lab dot map okay yeah okay. and if we mm-hmm. look at line number yes. 29 the reset handler is at 80008 yes yes yes, yes. Right. yes and then this number and should be available uh, in 8004 that is not shown when we debug maybe you know yeah. we can point out yeah yes we can yes. we can show that okay then perfect yes. So nice. We were talking about the reset handler. Yeah. So once you have set up the vector table, the next thing that we discuss is okay. The CPU will now come and uh, enter the function called reset yes. handler, whose address we gave yes. in the reset vector location. The first thing we want to do is relocate the dot data section to into the RAM. We want to take it from the right. flash and put it into right. Put it into the RAM. Put into the RAM. Yes. So now, if we look at our linker, and now we will understand what is the significance of end of text. So the dot data section starts where the end of where the text section ends. Yes. So after end of text, we start putting the dot data section. So that becomes our starting point. We need to start copying from right. here. And but where do we need hmm. to put it? That is marked by S relocate on line number 42. Start of relocate yes. section. So we need to take everything that starts from end of text, go all the way and copy them into the start of e relocate till we reach end of relocate section, which is marked at line number yes. 45. Yes. Also, at this point, I want to mention that when we were having this s underscore s text equals to dot, this dot was with reference to the flash region. When we are saying s relocate equals to dot here, that is with respect to the RAM. So the s relocate here, uh, let me just go up. S relocate is essentially pointing to this. Right? This look. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, and if you open the map file, map file will actually show this. Ah, nice. Correct. So if you go to dot data section, it will show S relocate starting dot from there. data section. Yes. So it says that the S relocate points to two zero zero zero. And S relocate points to. Also. And if you look at uh, more towards the right, it actually shows you the load address as well. Uh, just a second. Let me pull this here. Yes. So it shows that the uh, address from where it has to start loading is 8000D8. Mm. And it needs to start copying from this address all the way to 2000. And it will keep it doing mm. it till it reaches end Correct. of relocate. So I have to remind our uh, folks, which is this is flash address. And this one right mm. here is the RAM address, right? And I think this is the crucial part. If people get, you know, all of these uh, minute details, I think, you know, all the mystery is solved. Okay, perfect. Moving on then. Yeah. So 
that's what the if condition does if p source is not equal to p destination start just right. copying it and uh, okay i just want to put an animation here not animation but some graphics which is flash you know e okay. underscore e text happens to be right here so we start to copy from here uh, we know that the s relocate is right here and it ends here so this is like the underscore e relocate relocate so what we are then doing is we are saying okay start take a pointer word pointers two of them start from this address and again you know remember that these are symbols so the way to, uh, way to read yes. symbols is by putting an ampersand sign in front of them and that's what we do here so p s r c is pointing here p destination is pointing here right and then what we are saying is okay go on incrementing both of them and the p destination uh, copy the content of p source over to p destination and we continue to do so until p destination hits address of underscore e really locate uh right yes. which is happening uh which is happening here right as soon as it uh, reaches the end here we know that we have copied all right okay so yes. this is bss uh, sorry data section copy not data section. this is the data section right ah, yeah yeah yes. and then at this point what we are saying is okay now our destination should point to the start of the bss section and until we hit the end of the bss section right which is this yeah zero, zero of everything so let me just click here yeah and we are then saying zero now here's the funny thing right we were mentioning earlier that do not assume your bss or uninitialized data to be zero yeah. so now if instead of zero we made it one <laughs> that assumption of assuming uninitialized data to be zero goes out the window yeah right and yes uh, yeah your programs will break that was one thing and yeah. uh, okay go ahead rajat yeah and after that we simply just yes. come to me yes. we just call and now you know here's that mystery thing if instead of calling this main we called it let's say piyush underscore rajat for example if this was our function yeah. then you know the code will transition to executing this function so you can essentially have all of yes. your firmware without the main <laughs> yeah Having function main. existing anywhere <laughs> right okay perfect yeah. so okay what else did we miss anything i think uh, maybe not I think we are good i think we not i think uh, now we can just uh, show them step by step what we showed in go yes. we can show them in yes. execution okay. let's do that so let me keep this file open uh, we would need to or want to launch the renode renode okay, let me then do renode and it's fine this so by the way these instructions are again also available in the readme readme.mb so let me right readme.md and uh, i need to now load uh, the renode board information yeah the stem board and uh, i'll hit return key and it has loaded okay rajat now what do i do so so now what i have added is uh, so if we uh, maybe i can open the renode script for okay. them as well uh, can you can you go to the file yes. explorer into the renode board yes uh stm32 f4 yes. discovery so what happens over here is we create a machine named stm32 f4 discovery which you can see in the console is the name of yes. our machine and what we tell it is to load the stm32 f4 discovery kit which comes from renode okay. this platform comes from renode and then you can actually add certain things if you want you can create your own rep repl file and add some extra peripherals okay. if you want This is the place you can do all all board support packages. You can attach a LED to the STM32 right. board. You can attach a button to the STM32 board. All right. those and things. Right now, this this is, was made by you. This does not contain this. By, uh, this. Okay. this was made by. You. There is nothing over there. But if 
in case we want to extend it, let's say we want, I want to connect a LED to pin right. A12, I can use this file and modify this file to load a uh, uh, LED over there, over right. those pins. And then what we tell it is once this is there, uh, what what Renode does is Renode uh, creates a Sysbus interface mm -hmm. for us. Using the Sysbus interface, we can load binaries. I see. And that's what we are doing in line number 11. We are using the Sysbus interface and telling it that we have an ELF file mm -hmm. named lab1 and we want yes. it to load. Uh, we want yes. you to load it. And then what we do is we start a GDB yes, server. Point. On port number 1, 2, 3, 4. Setting it true, that means the machine, the CPU will not start executing till the GDB connects. Understood. So right now then, the CPU is just waiting. It hasn't, CPU is it just hasn't waiting even for... fetched the reset, uh, I'm sorry, the SP and the PC. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yes. So we can, uh, so now what we have to do is we need to start connecting the GDB okay. server. You can do it via command line as well, but for the ease of purpose, we have written a JSON, uh, written a task.launch.json mm -hmm. file for you, using which you can use STM32 using the use the VS Code itself to do right. the debug, right. debugging rather than using the TDB command. It just kind of you know makes debugging a little easy, and it makes life yes. easy for us as well to show you the. Uh, key points. Of course, later yes. on, we'll also go into command line based uh, GDB and how that works. Uh, but for now, let's stick to this. Yeah. Okay, so what do I do next? Uh, you can start okay. the debug so, session. So you can go yes, to debug. Just this button here and then this button here. You should see something like yes. attach yes. to renode. Attach to renode is available here. Detected by VS Code. And if you start it, it will start. Okay. So let me then open this. And then let's go ahead and start the debugging. And it's kind of, you know, starting the debugger. If you see, it's showing progress. Okay, done. So yeah, this is the debug uh, control, right? And let yes. me speak to a few more things here, just so that, you know, people can follow along a little bit better. So here, what we have is the variable related information, the local variables. And these are the CPU registers. Let me go ahead and expand those right. CPU and other registers. So these remember again, go back to the CPUs internal 16 registers. Uh, program counter is right here. Stack pointer is right here. Uh, uh, if we see the stack pointer is already loaded and the program counter is also already loaded. Right. And this happened instantly once we connected to the GDP server. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead, Rajat. So till now we have not executed even single yes. instruction. This is whatever you are seeing all happened okay. in hardware. Oh, okay. Let me also, you know, very quickly show people again, the memory, you know, layout. So this was our vector yeah. table, which consisted of two words, right? The first one was pointing to the stack which got yeah. copied over here, right? The second yes. one was pointing to the reset handler, uh, you know, which got copied yes. over to PC and that number is this. Yes. Now in the way we had written our linker script, the reset handler would start immediately after these two words. Yes. So this was the zeroth word. This was the first word. So, you know, zero address, four address, and this is the eight address and you see the eight yes. right here. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Yes. Go ahead. So, and let's step, step, step through. Okay. Into. So this is, which one is the step? I think step into. Okay. Yeah. I guess this one. Okay. So step into. Yes. Uh, we can step into one okay. more time. We can step into right. one more time. Uh, the reason to do that is so that I can show P source yes. and P destination. When we looked at our map file, we found a load address as 8000D8, mm. which we saw, uh, which we told that this is the location of the dot data section in the flash. Right. And start of the relocate, which was pointing to two O zeros, which was the starting of the data section right. into the right. lab. And when we look at our debugger, we can see that it is exactly those, yes. uh, those numbers. 
copied from the yeah. symbol table uh, do we want to pull this i think people can check symbol table on the site from yeah. the map file yes okay so from the map we have verified these two you know and now yes. let's maybe okay uh, i'll will go ahead and do next i think we only have yeah uh, we can do next we don't have anything yeah. in the dot data section so it should just rapidly yes. end <laughs> oh oops sorry i think i made a mistake <laughs> oops <laughs> it's fine there was nothing in the bss section and there was nothing in the dot data section so that's why we were yeah, not able so to... this this just kind of you know jumped through very quickly uh, and then yeah. it jumped inside the main also and uh, yeah yeah we are at the main okay and a few thing <laughs> and now you can do any execution yes so, so okay. here you can have you know the magical uh code <laughs> uh do, i i suppose yes. the code that we have here right now is for some led toggling i would want to yes. take a moment to modify this to become like a addition of two numbers just so that we can show yes, register sure, sure. So let's we can yes. stop the execution and yeah let me that. then stop the execution and let's just do int a equals to maybe 10 int b equals to 20 and then c equal okay int c equals to uh, you know, a plus b right. and yes. then save this uh, I will need to exit all of this. Yes, quit so the terminal is here. You need to quit. Uh, oh, sorry, quit. Yes, quit. quit renote done. Uh, make. Okay, I'll need to do make from this path. It has built. Then again, renode hyphen hyphen console. Right. Then I load the machine again. The machine is waiting and. Yes. I can put a breakpoint here to attach. Right, it's once again here. I yeah. let it run freely and it has stopped at the main. And uh, okay, let me get the CPU registers. Okay, so what do we have here? Three local variables, which are right here, CPU registers. And my claim is because the variables are less in number, less than seven i suppose or four uh, all of these will most likely be allocated or their values will be copied to registers uh, so yes. let's do step okay so r3 is where the value of a exists so a is 10 and r3 is here then i do next so very nice b is 20 uh, and r3 is 20 okay <laughs> which is interesting. So behind the scene, what must have happened is it must have pushed the content of R3 to stack just because local variables are yes. on stack. I'll just draw that. So this is our stack. So it first loaded R3 with value of A, which was hex A and behind the scene, it must have copied it here. Right. So 10 was saved here. Then now it has updated this to hex 14, which is 20. And then it will save it in another location. And when we do this line, it will actually, you know, copy over both of these again to the CPU registers, add them and you know, update another register with the value of C. Let's see. Too much convoluted for a simple operation, but that's how it works. Okay, next. And right, see R2 got A. Uh, R3 now is 1E, which is 30. So behind the scene, this is what must have happened in assembly. So the instruction becomes is add R3, R2, R3. R3, R2, R3. So it loaded A, hex A in R2, loaded hex 1,4 in R3, added both of these together and put the answer in R3. And that's where okay. we have this, we have this. Cool. So anything else we want to demo? Or I think we are pretty much done in terms of booting to main. 
yeah i think it's pretty much covered we pretty much yes. covered everything all right so those of you who stayed back so long hopefully you know you learned the black magic and the wizardry and catch you guys uh, in the next one bye bye